Now I'll call on Mr. Pistrelli to uh, give us a notion uh, about uh, the Egyptian fines, etc. I take the, the, um, the watch for 12 minutes, okay? 12, 12. 12 minutes. Thank you. Um, so, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting Annie to join this conference. Uh, I can preliminarily say that we share the rationale, the sense of the, of the meeting, and my job is quite easy after listening to the preliminary session and the keynote speech by uh, Mr. Amos Hochstein that I completely agree with. Uh, you know that any, uh, I will name it any, not ENI, uh, it's the Italian name, any, uh, is an integrated oil and gas company which is uh, actually working in uh, over 65 countries. And I would like to underline the Italian nature of the company because I do believe that Italy is among the closest friends of this country. And so we care about Lebanon and its future. Uh, we are taking responsibility as a country for security of Lebanon. So there's a special friendship that I would like to, 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 to keep going on. Uh, this is a region where um, many things are not changing in the last 20 years. Many things are still the same. But something is changing. And, and what Amos was mentioning before, energy is one of those remarkable changes. Uh, energy can be one of the trigger of a revolution, it's true. Uh, it has become a trigger after the big discoveries of uh, uh, Tamar, Leviathan, Aphrodite, and then Zor in the last 15 years. Um, and we will talk about that. Uh, but let me tell you that before talking ab about the discoveries, um, we have experienced in the last 20 years a, a sort of technological and energy breakthrough about gas that was mentioned before. When our explorers were looking for oil in the 90s and they were, looking, they were finding gas, they were talking about the risk of gas because uh, it was so difficult to, gas had to be consumed very close to the, to the discovery. Uh, the pipelines were very costly if you have to, uh, to, to, to cover long distances. There are no LNG technology. There, there was big flaring in many, in, in many fields. Now uh, the situation is completely dramatically changed uh, and Amos gave some numbers about Australia and, and US being the, the first uh, players in the upcoming years. We know that in 2020 there will be a flood of gas in the gas market, but still uh, there is an increase in demand in the next decade. Uh, so this, this has been one of the parameters that completely changed the landscape. And uh, let me tell you that this uh, energy revolution in the Levant uh, is interesting for, for two reasons. The first one is that if you calculate the total amount of discovered resources uh, here in the Levant and the total, the total domestic demands, uh, but we, we know that somebody needs gas and somebody is ready to produce and to export gas, but the two numbers are quite the same. So the first outcome of this energy revolution is that the uh, East Med countries could be ready to fulfill their domestic needs with the discoveries they, they had in their water. And then there's a second issue, uh, I mean, uh, given these numbers, that was mentioned by uh, Mr. Fouad Makzumi and from Amos Hochstein, uh, which is about the ancillary industry. Uh, in some cases with, big, with such a discovery, you can strengthen and consolidate the oil and gas service industry that you already have. This is the case of Egypt, to, to just to mention, because this kind of industry is active since 17, year, is 17 years old. But in other countries where you are just touching a new land, a new experience, this, this is going to improve uh, a lot of uh, domestic uh, economic growth, which is about oil and gas service, which is about human training and skills and new capabilities. So it's something that goes far beyond the discovery in itself, can be a trigger for economic uh, growth for the country. This, this, the third issue is about the role of gas uh, in, the, in the energy market today. Uh, we, 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 we all remember the very positive outcome uh, of the COP21 conference in Paris. No one could imagine just a couple of years ago uh, that gas would have been the bridging fuel for energy transition moving to renewables. 
So we all know that if you compare oil and gas, uh, gas and coal, not talking about nuclear, uh, gas is now considered the bridging fuel uh, with a very low uh, emission of CO2 uh, and with all the numbers that you, you know, uh, like me. Um, the, the, the second issue is that uh, something could, be, can, could become bigger and bigger with new discoveries. So this is what Amos was, in a way, uh, was suggesting during the Q&A session. So if you talk about the numbers of today, as I, as I, as I, as I, as I said before, uh, demand and production can fit. But it's true that there's a new campaign of exploration, a new boosting of activities in this area of the world, uh, and I'm talking about the, uh, ca the campaign of exploration which are active in Egypt right now. I'm talking about the second video round in Cyprus. So it's, I would say, likely or maybe highly likely that new discovery will be done. And if that is the case, yes, we can talk about not Egypt standalone or Israel standalone, but we can talk about a gas hub with some markets. Uh, there are some countries, not to mention just one like Turkey, uh, who imports 99% of this gas, is really hungry, uh, hungry about gas. And then everybody talks about uh, the potential for European markets. It's true, like Amos was saying before, that the domestic production in Europe is decreasing in the last, in the last years, the last few years. We move from being able to produce more than 50% uh, of, uh, uh, of our European needs. Now we are below 30 and we are moving to become below 20. So there is a a uh, huge demand in the next 15 years, and I guess that we, we guess that the uh, European imports will increase more than 50%. And as you all know, uh, Europe is, all, is also focused in diversifying suppliers and sources. So this could be uh, for real, in the, in, not in the near future, but in the, in the mid-term future, uh, one of the potential new sources for, for the European Union. Um, let, me, uh, let me tell you one, one other thing. Um, it's, it's easy because I'm on the same page of what Amos was saying, so uh, the risk is to repeat some, some concept, but I mean, um, it, it's not a damage if, if we do so. Um, yes, we uh, as a company, we are used to talk and to consider uh, the underground risk. But now the country risk, the profile of what is happening, not beyond the surface, but over the surface, is, is real. Um, I'd like also to thank Amos. I, I know he left because he was mentioning the, first, the, the, the biggest gas discovery in the world uh, over the last 10 years, that is Mamba and Coral in Mozambique, that was done by Eni, uh, and the biggest in the Mediterranean Sea, and that was done by Eni in Egypt. So I'm, proudly, I'm proud to say that. I mean, we have a good track record. When you're discovering six giants or super giants in six years, that's not happening by coincidence. It, it means that you have a model. No, no, it's not God, Fuad. It means that you, that you have a, a very good uh, exploration department. It, it means that you have a, uh, uh, one of the most powerful supercalculator in the world about that. Uh, it means that you have a, a good geology school in your country. So uh, this is a good sign for the future, we hope, uh, because last year we were able to discover only in 2014 1.4 billion uh, barrels oil equivalent with a cost for unit of 0.7 dollar a barrel. So very competitive even in this, uh, in this scenario. Uh, a, a, few, a few last comments about uh, the region and Zor. You all know that we discovered Zor in, uh, in August uh, 2015. Um, we are drilling well, very well, uh, so we, we are, we, we are mm, very good on track. Uh, the um, agreement with the Egyptian government is to be ready to go to, to provide first gas in, in two years, so two years from the discovery to the first gas, and you understand how this is crucial and how this is exceptional in this, uh, in, in this scenario. Um, but I have to say that the Egyptian government was able to uh, agree uh, with any, we are operator 100% in less than five months, in less than five months of all the kind of agreements we needed. Gas sales, supplementary agreement, uh, rules and regulation, taxes, everything, in less than five months. If you need to boost your economy, you need to be quick. This is a quick moving world. This is the main concept I would like to, to, to share with you. 
uh, we understand that uh, there is no the perfect lesson. Every lesson needs to be learned and to be modified. There is an uh, ongoing bidding around in Cyprus. It's not the first, it's the second. The government was able to change regulation and parameters from the first to the second. So you learn from your experience. You don't have to wait the perfect lesson. You start step by step, and then you build up step by step a long-term scenario. So going to Lebanon for the last two comments, I have still two minutes to talk. Um, frankly speaking, we don't know for real which is the potential. If you look at HNS, you look at the Wood Mackenzie, if you look at the government announcements, the numbers are different. But it's quite clear that the later you, you start, uh, the later you, you know the naked truth. Uh, so th there's no outcome if there's no race, if there's no competition. And you need to go green light to competition in order to understand which is the true potential of this, uh, of this country. It's true, as Amos was saying, that today, speaking about today, Egypt, because of the huge uh, uh, gas fields, because of the domestic market, and because of the facilities that are already there, can work as an Egypt standalone. But if we need to, if we want to build up a gas hub for the region, it's true that Israeli gas fields, Cyprus gas fields, maybe tomorrow Lebanese, have to, uh, let's say, fit together in a new jigsaw. So there's always time to catch up, but it's time to catch up. Because every time you, uh, th this is a capital intensive industry and a long term payback industry. It's like a, a Catholic marriage. It's going to last forever and ever. So when you, when you, when you build up a partnership uh, with a, in a country, you know that it takes years to study the, the fields. It takes years sometimes to make discovery. It takes years to build up the production. And this is the case of Cyprus and Israel. And then the relation is going to last for decades. This is the success story that we had in Egypt. We, we were there in 1954, and we're still there. But this is the kind of framework that you have to use when you are building up uh, uh, a gas hub where you, where you are creating or strengthening your oil and gas industry. So uh, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, uh, the role of, uh, of, of an IOC to uh, set the rules of the games or to, to, to tell to the institution what, what do they have to do. I understand that here in Lebanon there are great expectations. It's true that many IOC could be interested in understanding which is the true potential of this country, but it's up to political institution, to parliament, to government, to set up rules on the game and to make the first move, to make the first step. I'm, I'm here just to say, and I'm thanking you for your attention, that um, every long journey, every long journey requires a first step. Uh, so I hope, I hope really, that in the next decade and in the 30s, there will be a gas hub being able to share resources among all these countries, these eight countries of the Levant. There will be gas enough to provide domestic needs and maybe to export nearby or through the European Union, and also to share prosperity and peace. I'm a European and I remember that coal and steel were a factor of struggle and, and world war uh, in, in, the, in the last century and they have become the bedrock of the first European Union, the first European community. So that's my, I would say, political hope for this region, but I, the expectations have to be managed. And first of all, the first step requires that the government is able to go green and, uh, and, and, and catch up the momentum. There's a momentum, please don't miss it.